Hey everybody, Ryan back here for a second video for today. Going to be doing the St. Louis Blue Season Preview. Alright, if you're watching this, thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber, thank you very much for subscribing. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. And then hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I drop a new video. Alright, other than that, let's get started with the St. Louis Blue Season Preview. Probably going to be a good year for the Blues, not going to lie to you. I think they'll have a good year, so we'll get into that with the predictions, but for now, let's get into the additions. John Gillies, one year, $700,000, he'll be minor league goalie, he'll be taxi squad. Tori Krug, seven years, six and a half million per season. Actually, a pretty decent, decently priced deal for somebody like Krug. I mean, that's not a bad one, we'll see how it goes as the term goes along, but it'll be a good one to start. And a good addition, I mean, he's not going to fully replace Alex Petrangelo, but I think he'll provide more offense than Petrangelo did. So, that area is a bit of a wash, where the defensive side, I'm not sure Krug is as good defensively, or in the leadership ability, but he's still a good, solid defenseman, so it's a good pickup. Uh, Steven Santini, one year, 700000 Curtis McKenzie, one year, 700000 Sam um, hmm. Sam Onis? I'm not going to say anything. Two years, $725,000 per. Kyle Clifford, two years, $1 million per season. So, fourth line there. That's fine. Subtractions, Andreas Borgman to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Mike, oh God, Vishoni to Colorado. Derek Pouliot to Philadelphia. Alex Petrangelo like I previously stated, to the Golden Knights. Alex Steen, retired. Tro uh, Troy Brower is a free agent. Jordan Nolan is a free agent. And Jake Allen went to Montreal in a trade. They re-signed Vince Dunn, one year, $1.875 million per season. Jake Wallman, two years, $725,000. Jacob De La Rose, one year, $700,000. So, no huge re signings there. I mean, other than Vince Dunn, but it's one year, so it'll be RFA after this season again. All right, right now they are over the salary cap, 84 and a half. Their projected long term injury reserve use is 3 million, so that might be their saving grace. Uh, Ryan O'Reilly, three years. He's their new captain, by the way, if nobody saw that. I am, I'm sure Blues fans have seen that, but anybody who's not necessarily a Blues fan watching this, uh, Ryan O'Reilly has taken over for Alex Petrangelo since he left. Uh, Brand Shen, they got him for the foreseeable future. Hopefully he does better in the playoffs. Because that year they won the cup, then he only scored like two goals or something, like, some ridiculously low number. I mean, he still was a solid player, but he just couldn't find the back of the net. He just snake bit in that playoffs that year. Uh, Jaden Swartz is a UFA after this year. Same with Tyler Bozak. Uh, Zach, Zach Sanford is an RFA. Same with Ivan Barbashev, uh, Robert Thomas, and Jacob De La Rose. So they're going to have to give some money to some of these RFAs. So I have a feeling one, if not both, of Swartz and Bozak may be gone after this year, if not earlier than at the end of the season. If there's actually trades allowed, still don't know. Or how they're going to work. Because they may be on 14-day quarantines before they can rejoin rejoin the new team. Uh, defensively, they got Vince Dunn as RFA after this year. And Carl Gunnarsson is a UFA. Jordan Bennington is a UFA after this year. So they're going to have to re-sign him. And since Jake Allen is gone, it looks like Vili Husso is the guy who's going to be their backup. Possibly. Or someone else, not sure. Uh, right now, injury reserve, it looks like they're going to have Tarasenko, which could give them even more cap space. Now, Alex Steen is retired, but he's also injured, so I'm not sure how they're working that. It looks like they only have put an injured reserve. He is 36, so I don't think his money comes out since he retired, so he may just be put on long-term injury for the rest of the year. All right. Now for a non-roster forwards, Eric Foley is at RFA after this year, Dakota Johnson, uh, Jordan Cairo, Evan Poli, or Poli, uh, Tanner Kaspik, Austin Poganski, and Nolan Stevens are all RFAs. 
Curtis McKenzie and Nathan Walker are UFAs. On the defensive side, they got Mitch Reinke and Steven Santini as RFAs. Goalie-wise, you got uh, Evan Fitzpatrick as an RFA and John Gillies as a UFA. And they have Mike Huffman on a professional tryout right now, so with the long-term injuries, I'm sure they'll sign him. I'm not sure how long Tarasenko is expected to be out. I can't remember if it was a season one again or not. He came back in the play-in round last year. So, I'm not sure if he played all of it or not. Uh, 2020 draft, they got number 26, Jake Neighbors. So, he could be a guy to play for for him later on down the line. Not Probably not this year. Probably, you know, never know. This was a pretty deep draft. So, he, who knows? Maybe he has the talent to play. Uh, number 86, Dylan Peterson. 88, Leo Loof. Uh, number 119, Tanner Dickinson. 150, Matthew Kessel. Not sure if he's related to Phil Kessel or not. Uh, 163, Will, uh, Will Cranley. 194, Noah Beck. So they picked up three defenders, three forwards, and a goalie. So they spread the love there. All right. 2021 draft, they have no second, no fourth, no seventh of their own, but they have their own first, third, fifth, and sixth, and Detroit's seventh. 2022, they have all their picks except for their seventh. They have nothing in the seventh next year. And in 2023, they have all their own picks. All right. For the lineup, they have Brian Shen with Ryan O'Reilly and David Perron. Good, solid first line. You know they're going to provide the, most of the offense. Second line will provide some, too, with Jaden Schwartz, Robert Thomas. And if they sign Mike Hoffman, Mike Hoffman, although he could also slip into a second line, we'll see. Because they could also put him there, put Shen down there, and move Thomas to the right wing there. That could be what they do, but who knows. Or they could experiment. They also got third line, Zach Sanford, uh, Tyler Bozak, and Jordan Kairou. Kairou, I know they're expecting more than what he has provided so far. Nine points in 28 games, but he's only 22, so he's got time to turn that around and develop further. Fourth line, Kyle Clifford, Ivan Barbashev, and Oscar Sundquist. That's a good, solid fourth line. Definitely good numbers for a fourth line, that's for sure. All right, defensively, they got Tori Krug, who I think can provide a little bit more offense than what Petrangela did. I mean, definitely can provide offense, that's for sure. Colin Paranko, you know he's a good, solid defender. Same with Scandella. I mean, Scandella's not the offensive guy, but he's definitely a good defender. Justin Falk needs to provide a lot more, and I think he'll get more playing time now that petrangelo is gone. So he may have a chance to turn that around. Uh, Vince Dunn and Robert Bartuzzo are the third pair. So they have a good solid defense and good solid all-around offense. So And then Jordan Bennington, good solid goalie. 912 save percentage, 2.57 last year with 30 wins in 50 games. That's pretty good numbers. As long as he stays healthy, I don't see any problems with the goaltending. And then we'll see how Vili Huso or whoever they have as the backup does. And it looks like they have on the injured reserve uh, Vladimir Tarasenko, Alexander Steen, and Eric Foley. Steen's not going to come back, so he's going to be there a whole year. I'm not sure how long is supposed to be hurt for this year, but that could... I mean, if he comes back, he's going to be first line right wing, so... Everybody's kind of moved down the spot. So, that's how that'll work. Alright. Then you also have scratches. Samuel Blay. Good. I'm surprised that he's a scratch. Wow. Uh, Mackenzie McEachern. Another guy who played quite a bit last year. They're expecting more out of those two offensively. Carl Gunnarsson. Good solid seventh defender. Uh, let's see. They added Curtis McKenzie. Jacob Della Rose played for him last year. So, those are guys who could play. Easily. Let's see. Looks like Nathan Walker played. Oh, he's the, the Australian guy. There's only like one Australian guy in the league. So. Two points in five games last year. All right. Not bad. All right. Let's see. Miners, you see the names there. Loaned. Prospect-wise, I mean, they don't have a deep prospect pool like a L.A. or Ottawa does. But 
they have a decent enough and they have a decent enough younger team that they're going to be good for years to come. Uh, their top prospect that they're hoping will play this year, from what I understand, did, did he sign? Where is he? Yes, he did sign, so he's no longer in college. That's the nice thing about college is they can't play with professional contracts in college hockey or any college sport. So once they sign that contract, you know they're not going back to college. So he can only go back to juniors. Or not juniors, I'm sorry, um, to the AHL. Uh, let's see, Scott Peronovic, I believe is how you pronounce that. A defender, 40 points in 34 NCAA games. Uh, this guy has an interesting name, Clint Costin. Right wing, one point in four NHL games last year and 30 points in 43 AHL games. Jake Wallman, a defender, zero points in one NHL game and 27 points in 57 AHL games. Then Austin Poganski, a right winger, zero points in one NHL game and 30 points in 56 AHL games. Uh, then Joel Hofer, or Hoffer, he is 34, 8, and 5 in 48 WHL games. Let's see, other mentioned top prospects, Nikita Alexandrov, uh, center, Nico Mikola, a defender, Mitch Ranke, a defender, and Alexei, uh, oh god, Tarop, uh, Tarupchenko, uh, Tarupchenko, I'm going to go with that one, a center, like I said, sorry, oh, wow, I just wrote that, that's interesting, okay, they're probably going to be a top-range team. I don't know why I said top-to-top-range team. Must have been <laughs> from the previous team. <laughs> wow. They're going to be a top-range team. We're going to ignore the double top there. Uh, I'm definitely predicting they're going to be at the top of their division, if not the very top. I mean, their main competition in the West is Colorado and Vegas for that top spot. So, it's basically a three-way battle for that top spot. I mean, maybe with some... Really good years from these two teams. Maybe they compete. But, yeah. Don't see that. Sorry. Sorry to Minnesota and San Jose fans. I just don't see those teams being better than Colorado, St. Louis, or Vegas. So, St. Louis, as long as they stay healthy, like I say with every team, they're going to have a really good year. They're going to be top of their division easily. So, if you're a Blues fan, you have a lot to look forward to because you're going to be in the playoffs again, I'm sure. And should be a, possibly a good run, too. So we'll see. I'll be doing, once I finish all these, I'll do my actual true regular season predictions based off of the divisions and the playoffs format that I last heard about because it keeps changing. So we'll see how that works out. But I'll do that once I finish these last few teams. But for now, thank you for watching. If you're a subscriber, thank you for subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. Hit that notification bell so you know if I want to drop a new video. And other than that, make sure to like, comment, share. Just keep it civil in the comments. Like I said, I've already had to get rid of a couple comments because they've been very derogatory. So if you are being nice, you want to just have a nice civil debate, that's fine. No problem with that. But if you start name calling or being rude, you're done. Plain and simple. Not trying to be mean to anybody, but if you're being mean, you're done. So just keep it civil, have a nice calm argument, that's fine, and we will leave it there. Alright everybody, see you next time.